What's up you guys and welcome back. Today I'm super excited because we're just gonna do a laid back chit chat Q&A. Get ready with me where I answer all your guys' questions about my pregnancy. I asked you guys what questions you had on my Instagram and y'all came through and sent in like hundreds of questions. So I'm just gonna go through here and answer as many as I can while we just like chit chat, hang out, talk about life and do our makeup together. So if you are not ready right now, go grab your makeup and get ready with me or just grab a snack and kick back and relax. I'm super excited. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel if you have not already and click the little bell right next to the subscribe button to be notified of all my future uploads. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, we are going to start out with skincare. I'm going to start with my Proven Personalized Daytime Moisturizer. I want to thank Proven so much for partnering with me on this section of today's video, but they literally saved my skin in early pregnancy, like, which was something that I didn't really think about all that much because before you ever get pregnant, I feel like it's not something you think about all the time, is that one day when you do get pregnant, you're going to have to likely switch a lot of your skincare routine. And so that's one of the first things that I did when I found out that I was pregnant is I was like, all right, let me go through these products because I knew that I couldn't use retinol, but there are a lot of other ingredients that are in skincare that are also not recommended for pregnancy. So I had to go through everything and I was using like, you know, prescription-based acne products and stuff like that. And pretty much everything that I was typically using, I could not use anymore. So I was super stressed. I was like, okay, what am I gonna use? What is okay? And Proven and their three-step system came through for me, like literally took the guesswork out and made it so easy. You basically just take a quick quiz on their website. It'll ask you about your skincare concerns and then they will create a customized skincare formula for you in the quiz. They do ask you if you're pregnant or breastfeeding and Proven's products are backed by scientific research. It's not just about making claims, it's about actually delivering results. So it was really nice to be able to work with them and just create a skincare routine that actually worked for me that also didn't have any of the ingredients that were not pregnancy safe that I didn't want to use during this time because I was really concerned that my skin was going to be in shambles during pregnancy because again, I was using a lot of like prescription based acne and retinol products to keep my acne at bay. And I thought without using those products, my skin was gonna go crazy, but they have kept my skin in check. It's a very simple system. Like I said, it's three steps. You're gonna get a cleanser. Again, these will be personalized to your skin and your skin concerns, but mine is like a cream based cleanser. Then I have the personalized day cream, which this is SPF in it. So I can keep my skin protected throughout the day and moisturize. And then of course the personalized night cream for extra hydration throughout the night. This is a bit thicker. It does not have SPF in it like the day cream but is so moisturizing and keeps my skin soft and hydrated. So I love the three-step system. It's simple, it works, and took all of that crazy guesswork in the beginning of pregnancy out for me. So if you use my proven link, which I will put in the description box and you use my code Kelly Strack, you can get your own personalized three-step skincare system from Proven for $99. So I'll put the link on the screen here and also in the description box if you guys wanna check it out and shop. Alrighty, now that our skin is nice and prepped, let's go ahead and jump into the makeup and answering y'all's questions. Okay, first question, we're gonna start out with a more general one. This one is, how are you feeling? How's pregnancy going so far? So happy for you. So thank you so much. Um, and honestly, pregnancy has been going great. I got a lot of questions as well, kind of piggybacking off of this one, asking about morning sickness and then like, you know, how I have been feeling and all that. Because if you watch my first trimester vlog, you will see that I did deal with morning sickness, which I think most people deal with to some capacity during their pregnancy. And I have to be honest, based on like other people's experiences and other people that I've talked about, I feel super, super grateful and think I had it pretty dang well. So I cannot ask for anything more than that. I was pretty sick for about, I wanna say five or six weeks, but I know that there are people that unfortunately are sick throughout their entire pregnancy. So I cannot complain. My sickness has pretty much completely gone away at this point now, but yeah, I pretty much have no morning sickness at all anymore. I would say it got the absolute worst for me from about week six-ish to around week 12 or 13 was the worst. A couple of those weeks in there were pretty bad, but I truly am feeling back to almost, you know, pretty much normal right now, which is really nice. I'm sure as I progress further along my pregnancy and I get like bigger and bigger and stuff, I'm going to get more tired and everything. But second trimester so far for me has been really good. I feel pretty much normal. The only time interestingly that I do get nauseous is recently, um, we've had a lot of travel and stuff going on. And when I'm on the plane, I get a little nauseous. I'm assuming it might have something to do with pressure because, you know, I fly all the time and typically was never nauseous on planes, but that's definitely something that I've noticed. The nausea will kind of come out for the plane ride, which is interesting, but but again, I can't complain. I'm feeling great. I'm super, super grateful for that. Okay, next question is, what are your pregnancy cravings, you guys? I feel like this is one thing that I feel like I'm being robbed of, which that's just me being overdramatic, but like I was excited to like at two o'clock in the morning crave like pickles and donuts or something. I have not had really any pregnancy cravings. Like sometimes I'll be like, oh, you know, I'm hungry for like a pasta or something like that. But like that I would normally, you know, 
say that or something. If it's like a Friday night and we're trying to decide where we wanna go out to eat and I'm like, oh, I'm feeling pasta, you know, something like that. But like, I do not get crazy cravings at all, Um, which I think is really weird. Even in the first trimester, I did not get cravings for anything really. If anything, I had a lot of food aversions in the first trimester where now I'm back to like my normal self where I eat uh, pretty much the same stuff that I ate like pre-pregnancy. Like in the first trimester, I could not have coffee at all, which was super interesting. I just could not even like think about it. Never wanted it, nothing. Um, where now I'm back to having like my one cup of coffee in the morning when I get up and that works really well for me, you know, and in my morning routine, but yeah. I think I just more so had aversions to food than any cravings. Maybe they'll come a little bit later on, but right now I have not had any crazy cravings. Although one that I did say to Steven, I was like, you know what, I could really go for, I think it was a Domino's pizza because I saw Trisha Paytas post a Domino's pizza like on her Instagram store and I was like, oh, that looks really good. But like, <laughs> that was it. We didn't get it, I survived. But normally I would never want a Domino's pizza. Like I live in New Jersey, we have great pizza here. There's like 10 pizza places in my town that have much better pizza than Domino's. But um, yeah, the Domino's that Trisha Paytas posted looked pretty good, but aside from that, Nothing. Okay, next question. Let's get a good one. Ooh, thoughts on twin babies. Ah, oh, you guys, it's so crazy. So twins do not run in my family. They do not run in Steven's family. And I'm pretty sure I've heard that they're like supposed to be somewhat genetic. Like if you have a lot of people with twins, like my one friend, she has a lot of twins in her family and so does her husband. So I always tell her, I'm like, you are gonna have twins, girl. Like, I know it. And honestly, before getting pregnant, I always said that I would have liked to have twins because to me, it kind of sounds nice, like to have two at the same time. Like, although I think the pregnancy would be a lot harder and probably having like two newborns instead of one is, I'm sure that's not easy. Like I can't even imagine, but I feel like being able to raise like two together at the same time just seems so nice. Um, but no, I'm not having twins. There is one baby and one baby only in there. I didn't think there was really any chance. I mean, I guess the twins have to start somewhere, but they don't run in my family or Steven's family. So um, I didn't think that there was a high chance that I would you know, be able to have twins anyways. And there's just one baby in there. <laughs> but I actually would have been like excited for twins. I think that that's so cool and so beautiful. And you just have like this special bond um, with somebody like for your whole life, which I think is really cool. Also kind of piggybacking off of that, a lot of people were saying like how many children that we thought that we would have. Um, obviously this is our first child, or if you're new to watching me and you don't know that, I am pregnant with my first child right now. So so Steven and I are both only children, um, which is super interesting. Like I feel like that's kind of, I mean, it's not that rare, but the fact that you know we married each other and we're both only children is kind of cool. So neither of us have any brothers or sisters. So that actually means that our children will not actually have any like legitimate, I guess I'll say, um, aunts, uncles, or cousins, which is a little bit sad just because we don't have siblings ourselves. Of course, we're super close with our family, our cousins, all of our friends, like those are gonna be like the aunts and uncles and the cousins of our kids, but they won't have any like legitimate ones, <laughs> if that makes sense, like actual bloodline aunts, uncles, or cousins. So because of that, we always kind of thought that we would definitely probably have at least two kids. Just because it's funny, growing up, me being an only child, it never bothered me because I was very close with my cousins and I honestly like considered them like my siblings. For Steven, it did kind of bother him because his family lives a little bit further away, the cousins that were closer in age to him. So he didn't have that same like closeness with his cousins that I did. Um, so yeah, we kind of always thought two kids, but again, you never know. Like I could end up having five kids. I could end up only having one. Like I really don't know, um, until I have one, I think, and like go from there. But I think the like initial plan of what we always kind of thought was two. But we'll see where life takes us, you know? I'm not like super stuck on a number either way. One thing I will say is my dad was one of eight and I don't think I'll be able to have eight kids. That's one thing I don't think I can handle. Okay, lots of questions about gender as well. Like, are you going to find out gender? Will you do a gender reveal? If so, I'm so excited for you, which thank you so much. And then lots of people asking about, do you want a boy or a girl? Um, and all sort of questions like that. Like, what are you hoping for? Boy or girl, congrats by the way, which thank you so much. Okay, so lots to unpack here. First thing is, are we finding out gender? Yes, we decided that we are. We did go a little bit back and forth on whether or not we were going to actually find out the gender. Before getting pregnant, I never thought that I would be able to go like through the whole pregnancy and not know what the gender of my baby is. Like I always thought that I would need to know. And then once I got pregnant, weirdly, I was kind of like, I kind of feel like I could do this and like go through the whole pregnancy and then like find out when I give birth. Cause I feel like that's like the ultimate surprise of a lifetime. Like you'll never really get a surprise like that again. Um, my mom did it that way. She did not know what I was before I was born. It was a surprise at the hospital. And same thing with Steven and his mom. She didn't know either. 
it was a surprise at the hospital. I feel like it was a little more common for people to do it that way back when we were born, but one of my best friends did that and it was like, we were all so excited when we found out, you know, the gender of her baby when she gave birth and stuff like that. So I kind of was like considering the idea of not finding out, but Steven was like, no, absolutely not. We need to know, like he's, first of all, he doesn't really like surprises. So I feel like he's like, I don't need that surprise in the hospital room. Like I want to know beforehand and be prepared. And he is just like a very prepared person, like wants to have everything ready and set to go beforehand, which not that you can't do that without knowing the gender, but ultimately we decided, okay, we will find out. So we are gonna find out that should happen very soon, like probably this week at our appointment or potentially next week, but we should know really soon. Now, one thing about that is because a lot of people were asking if we would do a gender reveal. So that's another thing that Steven and I talked about a lot. Again, kind of piggybacking off of him really not liking surprises, which if you watched um, you know, any of our vlogs together, you already know that probably. But my husband really didn't want to be surprised in front of like a bunch of people, like wanted to just find out like me and him, which actually I really liked the idea of as well, like us just kind of finding out together and having that for ourselves like privately and then doing like a casual reveal for our friends and family like that, like not having this huge party where we don't know either and like doing the surprise with everybody else. We kind of just wanted to have that moment for ourselves. So I think that's the route that we're gonna go. Like find out together ourselves, have a moment together um, to celebrate just me and him. And then we'll plan some sort of fun reveal for our friends and family um, to share the news with them. And then lots of people are asking what I think the gender is and then what we want the gender to be. Um, so truly all Steven and I can ask for is a healthy baby. And I know everybody says that, but like really, I feel like once you get pregnant, like that's all you are worried about is like, is this baby healthy? And just going through all the tests and everything and making sure that everything is going well and positively and in like the way that you want it to go. So that's all that we can ask for with our baby. And also we both always, like we've always had like, names picked out and stuff for like our future children and we've always had boy and girl names. I think because we always kind of imagined having more than one child because we're both only children. We always imagined like having both sons and daughters and like having at least one of each gender, if that kind of makes sense. So because it's our first baby, I really don't have a pull either way or preference either way. Because God willing, I would hope to have daughters and sons in my life and like the experience of both. And Stephen feels the same way, like we really don't, not that we don't care, but like it's not, we don't have like an overarching preference either way. With that being said, I will be shocked if this baby is not a boy. I really feel like it's a boy. Um, and I felt that way like pretty much the entire pregnancy, not really right at the very beginning because at that point I had like no symptoms or anything. But when you look up like those old wives tales things, which those are not scientifically backed, like they literally basically mean, you know, nothing. When you look at them, I fit almost every category for boy. One of the big standout ones for me in my first trimester was that I, well, I had I talked about before I had like food aversions. I had like an aversion to sweets, which was so weird. I've never been like a huge dessert person or sweets person, but I like had no interest in like cake, cookies, cupcakes, none of that. Like I was pregnant and during the first trimester um, and actually kind of the point where I was pretty sick was right around Christmas time. And every year we make like a ton of Christmas cookies, all these Christmas pies and cakes and all this kind of stuff. Like my family goes all out. I think I had one Christmas cookie the whole time, <laughs> which is so unlike me. Like normally I would have 10, you know what I mean? Like I indulge during the holidays, but I just, I could not be bothered with the sweets at all. Now I'm a little bit like, you know, at night I'll like crave like a little dessert, like some strawberries with Nutella or something like that. but. I went weeks and weeks and weeks, had nothing for dessert, which I normally would always have like a little sweet treat after dinner, did not want it at all, which was, that was my first time I was like, oh, this baby must be a boy because sweets are literally repulsing me, which is like one of those old wives tales. If you're having a girl, you want sweets. If you're having a boy, you want like savory, salty kind of foods, which was definitely the category that I was more into. Another one was the fact that my morning sickness was not too bad. Like I would say, that it was mild. When I was going through it, I probably wouldn't have said mild, but now I feel like looking back with a clear head, I'm like, it could have been so much worse. I could have had that sickness every single day for you know at least 12 weeks where I really only had it really bad for about six weeks. And ultimately I was able to still function. Like people had shared stories with me where they needed to be on like a feeding tube and all this kind of stuff like in the hospital because they could not keep any nutrients down. Like mine was to nothing to that extent. So I can't complain about it and would consider it much more on the mild side, which I'm very grateful for, which again is also a sign of the old wives tale 
um, to boy. Although I will say like my one friend, she has two girls and she wasn't really very sick at all during her pregnancy. My mom wasn't sick at all and she only had me. So none of this stuff is scientifically backed. I'm just, these are the reasons why I think boy, but I could of course be wrong. Those were like the two big ones for me. And also my skin too. They say more acne and stuff means girl where your skin being in like better condition means boy, which I was shocked that my skin has been in such good condition without being able to use like my normal sort of high powered like acne products. Cause normally like my jaw would be covered with all sorts of like deep cystic um, acne. So those are the reasons as to why I think boy. But I will say that another one of the old wives tales is that if you're cold all the time, it's boy. And if you're hot all the time, it's girl. And I I get weird hot flashes. That's one weird symptom that I've had. Um, I know my mom had them like when she went through menopause She would always say like oh, I'm getting a hot flash and I never really understood like, you know What she meant by that and now I get it because I get them and It's very weird like you'll just be doing essentially, you know, whatever you're doing Like it could be nothing and then all of a sudden you'll just get so hot and I'm like, what is going on? Like I feel like my body is overheating and that's happened to me like four or five times Which is so strange and they say that could be a sign of a girl and also heart rate when we um, went one of the first times and they tested the baby's heart rate, it was pretty high. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, what it was, but I wanna say it was like 160 something, which they say is a sign for girl. So I don't really know. If I had, if I was a betting woman, I would say boy. I think Steven thinks more girl though. So who the heck knows what it's gonna be. Like I said, all I can ask for is a healthy baby and I'm so excited either way. And also for gender reveal, of course, we will film whatever we do for our friends and family. We will film for you guys and share that with you guys in a vlog as well. Um, and then we'll announce it on here. So you guys will definitely get that content. Don't you worry. Um, but yeah. Okay, next question is, did you did you use any apps to track your fertility window? Yes, I did. Um, I used Flow. I had had that before, um, that I used it like to track my period. It's just FL, is it FLO? Let me double check on my phone here. Yeah, FLO, Flow. So you can use it as like a period tracker and it does also tell you uh, when you're ovulating. So I did use that when we decided that we wanted to start trying. I got a lot of questions just about like, you know, was it a planned pregnancy? How long were you trying for? Like all sorts of um, questions like that, which I wasn't 100% sure if I was gonna like really get into that or answer that, but because I know it can be a sensitive topic for some people. So if that is something that is sensitive to you, I can put a timestamp on the screen here for you to skip this part, but I did get a lot of people asking about that. Um, and I did wanna share kind of my experience and what happened because another question I have here is like, did you have any fears leading up to getting pregnant? Um, and that I definitely did. I always in the back of my mind for whatever reason thought that I would either not be able to get pregnant or it would take me a really long time to be able to get pregnant. And it's not like a completely outlandish fear. And the reason behind that is because when I was younger, I don't remember the exact age, I was much younger. I wanna say I was like maybe 15 years old, 16 years old. Um, pretty sure I was still in high school at the time. I was told that I have PCOS. Um, which is polycystic ovary syndrome, if that's something that you haven't heard of. Um, it's relatively common, honestly. I'm not a doctor or anything, I don't know the percentages, but I know that it's not a super uncommon thing. Um, so I was told by a doctor that I had that back when I was in high school because I had a lot of the symptoms I was having like really painful period cramps and they realized that I had a cyst on my ovaries and my periods were irregular back then. As time when all my periods became more normal as I grew up older. But back then they were super irregular and the doctor basically told me that I had PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome. So I was kind of like, okay, like, what does that mean? Like, cause I was just in a lot of pain from my period cramps. So I was like, how do we fix this? They ended up giving me like some prescription medicine to take like when I had really bad period cramps and I kind of went on my day. But later on in life, when I started thinking about, you know, being a mom, because when I was like 15, 16, I wasn't really thinking about that or concerned about that. I realized that having PCOS can make conceiving more difficult. Um, definitely not impossible, but it can definitely complicate it in some cases. I mean, you can read a bunch of things online both ways. So I think when I was like around 20 or so, which I still wasn't in the mindset of like wanting to become a mother at that point, I realized, oh, this can have an effect like on my fertility. And I kind of always have that in the back of my mind because although I wasn't in a point of my life where I wanted to be a mom at that point, I always knew that I did want to be a mom eventually, you know? So that was something that I kind of always had in the back of my mind. And I thought for sure that it was probably going to take a long time for us to conceive. This is obviously something that I had told Steven about. Um, I think we were even together at the time when I was initially told <laughs> when I was young 
young because we've been dating for so long that I had PCOS, whatever. So for Steven and I, we got married when we were 25 and having a child right then was not something that we wanted to do. There was a lot of things in our life that we wanted to kind of accomplish and different things we wanted to do before we started to think about having kids. And I feel like we were still growing up ourselves. Like we just weren't ready at that point. I feel like to have kids and they always say that you are never truly ready, which I do think is true. But when we turned 30 this year, we really started to think about it more. Like I feel like we're in a place in our life now where we do feel ready or at least more ready than we did before to be able to like have a child. So we really started to think more about it then. So I started to track my ovulation with the app. I did also have like the clear blue um, ovulation little um, like stick things too, which just helped too. Cause I didn't know if the app was accurate to be honest, cause you don't really know, you know, when you're ovulating for sure. So when the app said I was ovulating, I used the clear blue little sticks and it said that I was ovulating. So I was like, all right, like let's try and see what happens. And in my mind, I'm kind of like, okay, well let's try for like a year and then figure out what our next steps are. Um, and then I literally became pregnant, which I was like shook and really surprised so grateful and um, just so excited. And I was like, wow, I went for years stressing out about this because you just, you don't ever know. And um, it's obviously something that's so sensitive and I wasn't something that I really wanted to talk to people about or anything like that. So I'm just so, so grateful. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's basically what happened. So yes, we were trying, um, but we were both definitely shocked. Um, that it worked essentially because I had basically built up in my mind that it wasn't going to kind of already thinking about what next steps and all that kind of stuff was going to be. So I'm beyond grateful, just so, so excited and just can't wait. Um, okay. So this one question is easy to answer. Somebody said, do you think you'll still love beauty when you're a mom? Absolutely. Um, I have always loved beauty. I don't think that that will change in the least. And obviously like I'm doing this video cause again, I, it's fun to make the pregnancy videos and to answer your questions. And I always have these to look back on and stuff like that. Um, and hopefully they can be helpful. Cause I know there's a lot of people that watch me that are around the age right now where they want to start trying where they're new moms or they're currently pregnant. So I am going to do pregnancy content on my channel, but it's going to be sprinkled in to my normal content. So this channel is not gonna change. You are still gonna get beauty content and then you'll get a couple pregnancy related videos throughout the next 10 months basically, or I mean, I don't have 10 months left, but <laughs> you know what I mean about pregnancy, but my channel is still gonna stay beauty. I'm not gonna turn into like a mommy vlogger or uh, whatever like that. So yes, I will still absolutely love beauty. I know that it's never gonna go away. Okay, this is a good one. What are you scared or afraid of in this process? So this is something that I feel like a lot of times people don't like to talk about because you wanna seem like, you know, tough and ready to be a mother and like all that. Um, and honestly, being pregnant doesn't, I think maybe before I was pregnant, be, the, the process of being pregnant scared me a little bit. Now that I am pregnant, it doesn't scare me at all. I feel very like content and prepared and ready and everything. Like I feel like, you know, relatively normal. So that doesn't really scare me. Um, being a mom doesn't scare me either. I'm just so excited. Like I'm sure there's gonna be fears and things that'll scare me. This excitement like takes over. So I'm really not scared or afraid to like be a mom. But to be completely honest, what absolutely terrifies me is the actual process of um, childbirth, like act the actual giving birth. Um, that terrifies me. I'm not even in a headspace right now where I can even think about it. I know eventually I'm gonna have to get there, but like for right now, I'm just kind of floating along, not really thinking about that process. Like I'm thinking about me being pregnant now and then me having the child, you know, after they're already out. Um, the process of getting them out, that's the one thing that I can't really think about. My issue with it is that I don't like hospitals. I hate hospitals. I mean, I don't even like doctor's offices, but I go to those because I have to. And especially when you're pregnant, you have to go to so many dang doctor's appointments. But um, yeah, just being like a patient in the hospital, like in the hospital bed freaks me out so much. And I, I mean, I'll get over it. You have to, it is what it is. But the process of like all that, I've never been a patient in a hospital before ever. Like I've never even had like a surgery or anything like in a hospital um, or ever had to stay overnight or anything like that. So that definitely freaks me out. And that's what I am um, most scared of. Really the only thing that I'm scared of in this process is the actual process of giving birth. But hoping that'll just be like a, you know, one day thing, hopefully even less than that. And um, it'll be smooth sailing. I'm not gonna know till it happens. So me worrying about it now is not gonna do me any good, but that's the only thing that I'm scared of. Um, and yeah, I need to get myself to the point where I can like, you know, do a little bit more research about the process and everything. Cause right now I can't even like look at anything about the actual giving birth thing because it freaks me out, but I'll get there. I know that I will. <laughs> All right, you guys, that is everything. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope that I answered most of like the most 
asked questions that you guys have. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye.